Welcome back, my name is Ned and in this video series we will learn how to build a simple CRM application using the Caspio platform. In part 2 of this video series I will teach you how quickly and easily you can develop database tables and create a relationship between them. Let's take a look. Once you are logged inside your Caspio account it's really easy to begin building an application but before we do that I would encourage you to actually follow along with the video if you have a trial account set up Go ahead and pause the video when needed, but see if you can recreate some of this functionality inside your account. I think you'll have a lot of fun. You're going to learn how to use the platform and you'll see how easy it is using a point and click interface to build out these functionalities and these workflows as needed. As I mentioned, it's really easy to get started. All you have to do is click on this link, New App, and then you're going to have two ways on how you can begin. You can begin by importing data from an external source. If you have an Excel file or Access database, you can bring all of that data in right away. However, if you don't have any data that you're importing, you can begin building your application using a blank template. So let's go ahead and do that. And then let's give our application a name. I'm simply going to call this Simple CRM Application Demo. Notice that my naming convention is slightly different. I added this word demo. The reason behind that is because I can't have the same application listed twice with the same name. Therefore, I have to alter the name in order to fit that inside the list of the applications. Once you're done, click on Finish, and you will now be able to see that container listed on the home page. Next step is to open up the application, and what you'll notice is these objects on the left-hand side, and you're going to use these objects to create this application. Now the very first object that's highlighted by default is the Overview tab. This screen is mostly informational for you to add notes and keep track of your progress. Once you're done with this screen, the most important place where you want to begin is the Tables object. Tables contain the data and are the foundation of any application that you build inside your account. So it's always important to begin here first. And believe it or not, this simple CRM application is only going to have three tables. So let's build our first table, which is going to be our staff table. As my very first field, I'm going to add staff ID, and I'm going to change the data type to a random ID. When you're building your tables, it's always important that each one of your tables has a unique field. This is what's called the primary key to identify each record in the table. The next field that I may be interested in having is date added. I would like to know what date and time each one of my employees was added to the staff table, so I'm going to change the data type to a timestamp. Let's have names of our employees. Let's have their email. Now for the email field, I'm going to flag that as a unique field as well because I can't have two different employees with the same email. Each employee should have their own unique email address. I will add a password field and quickly flag that as a password data type so it's encrypted on the table level. I will add a role field. Now the role field is actually pretty critical because this field is going to be used to identify all of your admins versus managers versus employees, supervisors, depending on how many roles you would like to have in that application. And last but not least, I'm going to add a field called status, and I'm going to change that field to a Boolean yes or no. And all this field is going to be used for is to give the manager the ability to flag who the active employees are and who the inactive employees using a simple checkbox. Once you're done inputting all of your fields, just go ahead and hit save. And let's call this SCRM TBL staff. Now SCRM is an abbreviation for Simple CRM and I recommend that when you're naming your tables is to always abbreviate that with the application name because it's much easier to find that table if later down the line you want to export the table or the entire application. Once you're done click on finish and you're now going to see that very first table inside your account. Let's build our second table which is going to be a simple lookup table and I'm also going to add stage ID. Remember to always add a primary field and I'm going to flag that as any one of these four that I have here as my IDs. I'm just going to use random ID. 
and I'm only needing one field in this table called stage. I'm going to click save and we're going to call this SCRM stage lookup. Inside this table I'm going to open it really quickly and I'm going to add some sample data to it. So as my first stage I may say one prospect and we have a 10% chance of closing these accounts. Let's add another stage here forecast at 50% closing rate. Then we'll add a third stage forecast as well at 80% closing rate. And last but not least we'll add anything that was won or closed and we'll say that is at 100%. Now in your business you might actually have different stages depending on your own sales funnel and workflow but these are the ones that we're going to add for our application. Let's go back to tables and now we can see we have a total of two tables. Now let's build our last table and this is going to be a bit of a longer table. We're going to have approximately 15 to 20 fields because we want to collect more information from our leads or our contacts that we're inputting into the database. And again, always add a unique primary key field first. So we're going to call this contact ID and I'm going to flag that also as a random data type. Let's have first name of each one of our contacts that we're collecting, maybe last name. And I'm just quickly going to add all of these fields and explain why I chose a specific data type for each field. Once you're done adding all of your fields for your table, depending on, again, depending on what kind of data you wish to collect, then you're going to change the data type for all of the necessary fields. So for example, my deal size, I know that I'm actually going to store a revenue or a numerical value in this field, so I would like to flag that data type as a currency. For my follow-up date, since I'm storing dates and times, I would like to flag that as a date and time field. My notes section is going to be able to contain more than 255 characters, so I'm going to flag that as a text 64,000 field. And date added, I'm simply going to flag that as a timestamp so we can automatically stamp the date and time of each submission. And the last one here that I have, which is assigned to by staff ID, what we're trying to accomplish here is to link each contact to the respective staff members. So for example, a staff member can have more than one contact that he or she is overseeing. So we want to be able to stamp the staff ID in this table and establish a relationship between the staff employees and the contacts table. In other words, this is going to be a one-to-many relationship. One staff member can have many contacts. When done, click on Save and we're going to call this SCRM TBL contact info. Once you're done, you're now going to see a total of three tables inside your account and these tables are going to be the foundation for all of the forms and all of the reports that we're going to create later on in the video series. The next thing that we can do is quickly establish a relationship between the staff table and the contact table. So let's go to the relationship screen. We're going to include our table of staff and also our table of contacts and the way these two tables are linked together are via the staff ID. So when a staff employee adds a contact we want to be able to stamp this staff ID inside a contact table. And Caspio is automatically going to establish this relationship type as a one-to-many. The reason why is because a staff member as I said can have more than one lead or more than one contact. Another thing that I want to change here in this screen is I actually want to display the name of the staff member inside the data page. So later on when I build a report, instead of displaying the ID of the staff member, I can choose to display the actual value. In this case it's going to be the name of the employee. When you're done, click on Create and now you're going to see how those two tables are linked together. One staff member can have many contacts and all we're doing is stamping the staff ID into our contacts table. This concludes the video on table structure. Join me in the next video where I actually teach you how to build login screens and how we assign different privileges to each one of our employees. I'll see you there.